Hey team, how's it going? Welcome to today's video. Welcome to Combat Ready HQ. Today we're going to be looking at 7th Parachute Regiment Raw Horse Artillery or otherwise known as 7th Power RHA or to the rest of the army because they hate them, 7 RHA. Uh, it's not 7 Power, it's 7 Power RHA. For those that don't know, I'm Craig Holman. I actually joined 7 Power RHA back in January 2008 after I completed training at AFC Harrogate and then phase 2 training at Lark Hill before I transferred in 2017 to the Household Cavalry Regiment. Absolute brilliant unit, um, highly recommend but let's get into it. We're not They're not parachute regiment but they are parachute trained. They do work with the only high readiness brigade within the army and that's 16 air assault. But what is it they actually do? How can you join them? So seven then is, like I said, they are part of 16 Air Assault, the only very high readiness brigade within the British Army, and they provide joint fires and targeting to that brigade. So they support two and three para, and then any other sort of regiment that then gets attached around them. So sometimes you'll see the Royal Irish, the Gurkhas, PWR have been attached, um, but mainly obviously two and three, and then you have some other infantry units that then build up and build that Air Assault sort of part of 16 air assault brigade it's no longer an airborne brigade it's 16 air assault they are the airborne artillery and they do many different roles within them you've got the fire support team side which is what i did so that's obviously the joint fires and the targeting basically going out on the grounds possibly behind enemy lines and basically picking the target picking the coordinates of the target and then controlling those fires onto that target you then have obviously the gun line because they need to fire the guns, uh, which is the 105. You've then got the communication side to making sure comms is all on point and then also working in within the CEP, the command post, making sure comms is going back and forward all right, converting the speak from the fire support teams into gun speak over to the gunners. You've then got your standard support, um, logistics, MT, which is your motor vehicles, uh, and all your sort of stores that we all build up the regiment to make sure it works efficiently. How do you join seven then? So relatively easy, few physical tests in the way that you need to do, but you're going to apply for the army. You can check out my videos on how to apply. You're then either going to go through AFC Harrogate if you're a junior soldier, or you'll go through adult entry at Purbright. Once you pass phase one and during phase one, you're then going to select three regiments that you would like to possibly join within the Royal Artillery. If you choose seven or two nine or four seven three, these are classed as voluntary regiments. You're guaranteed to get that regiment as your first choice. Otherwise, if you put another unit that is an airborne commando of four seven three, four seven who? Uh, you are basically you'll get one of those three normally wherever they need you if the top choice is full you'll get your second or third choice but if you choose seven two nine or four seven three you are guaranteed to get that as your first choice because they're classed as a specialist unit a voluntary unit and you're going to get it so you're then going to go to phase two phase two is conducted at lark hill down on salisbury plain you then come under 14 regiment which is the training regiment there and you're going to conduct your phase two training depending on what you're going to do or depending on what training you do at phase two whether you're going to be gunner guns whether you're going to be comms whether you're going to be um air uavs air defense whatever it is but for seven it's going to be comms or guns you're not going to do the fire support stuff so if you want to go fsts you're not going to do that in phase two that is actually done at regiment. So all you need to focus on whether you're going to do the comms course or whether you're going to do the cunts course. This is the basic most level one course. While you're there, because you're going to a specialist unit and you need a higher physical ability and mental resilience, you're going to conduct extra PT sessions. You're going to do extra physical training sessions. This is normally done in an evening. And they used to have, I believe they still have it, it's something called C Troop, where you actually get put in C Troop, where all the instructors are there, are either 7, 2, 9, or 4, 7, 3, and you can learn from them about how they conduct themselves, how they train, any questions you have on the unit. And then, like I said, on an evening, when everyone else is doing sports or chilling out, you're going to conduct extra physical training sessions to make sure you're ready. Because when you leave Phase 2, you're then going to go to 7 up in Colchester, 
and then you're going to have to obviously get put in a battery, conduct standard military life for the unit, but you're also going to have to continue to train and attempt P Company. When I joined Seven a long time ago, uh, they actually had something called P Troop. So you went from phase one, phase two to seven in Colchester, and then you went into P Troop, and all you did was fizz two to three times a day until you passed P Troop. Then you went into an actual battery and went into standard military life. Now you get put in a battery, they no longer have P Troop. So you've got to train in the evenings, you've got to do standard PT in the morning and get yourself ready for P Company. Not everyone in seven is P Company trained, but the majority of them are. It's pretty to look down upon if you're not. Um, obviously, you're not then airborne, you're not parachute trained, you're not ready to be deployed anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world at a moment's notice. But the odd person does stay there and they get put maybe in the stores or, or, or in MT, you know, if they're a good bloke. Um, they do also accept females now. Um, so you do have males and females. The first females have now passed P Company. So girls, you can do it. It has been done. But once you get to seven, you're then going to have to do P Company. Like I said, around military life. So you'll still be going out on exercise. You'll still be doing courses. You'll still be going down the gun park, working on the vehicles. You're then going to pass P Company. Once you've attempted and passed P Company, you have a little bit of a wait, but hopefully not too long. You then get put on your jumps course, your parachute, basic military parachute training course. This is then going to get you to earn the right to wear your wings. Once you've got them, that is you completely trained. You've actually earned the right to wear the Maroon Beret and you've got your wings and you're ready to deploy anywhere in the world. Like I said, though, before you would have done comms training or you would have done guns. Now you can start specialising and showing interest in other sort of areas. Like I said, if you want to go down the stores MT route, you can show an interest in that. But normally people either want to be on the gun line, guns go boing, um, in the CP, so the command post working on comms. Or if you have a little bit about you, a little bit fitter, a bit more brains, you might ask to go into the fire support teams. I was actually lucky enough that they come back off Herrick 8. Uh, I just passed P Company. They had a big move around of batteries, uh, blokes, blokes left, and I got put straight in the FST. So I never actually went in the CP or on the gun line. But you can show an interest in the fire support teams if you want to. Um, they will look at you, see if you you know you suit it, if you're a good fit. They bring you in for a couple of trials, um, see how you sort of work, see if you can handle it, see if you're fit enough. Uh, and then if I think you're fit enough, you'll get moved into the FSTs and you'll then start having to work your way through and doing your OPAC courses, um, two, three, four, and then five. If you stay on the gun line, you then just go and do like your level two gun course, level three, level four, start working your way through the gun line, um, start working your way through the chain of command, you know, promotions, start off as a gunner, you then become a lance bombardier, bombardier, sergeant, staff sergeant, sergeant major, and work your way through. Um, but it is really tough. It's actually a really tough life. If you're going to join seven, you've got to have that mental robustness and that mental resilience. It's not like any other artillery regiment that I've worked with. It is completely different. They have a completely different attitude, um, different way of looking at things. They want things to be the best all the time. You have to be physically fit. Don't put yourself down because they will get you up to the standard, but it's a very physically fit regiment. When I used to go and get attached to other units, the difference in physical fitness and the training was massive. So it is really different, but it's definitely worth it. It's a really tough unit to be in, um, but it's definitely one of the best units to be in. Trust me, they're a really good unit. Whenever they go around and they do sports days or events, cross countries, whatever it is, we've always got blokes winning it or coming in top three, you know, they most probably the most hated regiment within the British Army, but definitely one of the best regiments. I guarantee it. It's hard. It's tough, but it's fun and it's definitely worth going to. It's changed slightly now, like all of it, but they have good piss ups, good banter, great morale. They all want to do the best. You get brilliant training. You work with some great instructors. Honestly, I highly recommend doing it. So what you want to do, like I said, check out my videos on how to apply. So you're going to apply for the Royal Artillery with an interest to go seven. Complete phase one. You're then going to go down to Lark Hill. Complete phase two. But in phase one, you would have put your PP in, your free interest of what regiment you want to go to. If you want to go seven, pull it top. You're guaranteed to go and get it. Head down to Lark Hill. Do your basic sort of trade training. 
work within C Troop, use the instructors, do the extra physical training, build up your mental resilience. Leave Lark Hill, go to um, Colchester Merville Barracks 7, get put in a battery, um, work within actual military life, continue to train hard, stay on top of your admin, keep your kit squared away, ask questions, pass P Company, go and get your wings, fully qualified, get extra power of pay and enjoy military life within seven. Enjoy the banter, enjoy the drinks, enjoy just being with some of the fittest blokes within the army uh, and just have a really good time. They go in, they go on so many deployments, it's absolutely unreal. It's got to be one of the most deployed artillery units, I think, within like the world because they get attached to a lot of airborne units and they do a lot of sort of training. You could be going Jordan. I know people go on Kazakhstan. They work with the French Foreign Legion a lot. The Australian Army we've worked with a lot. Work with the Americans a hell of a lot. Go out there, do massive jumps in America. Um, they're always getting new bits and equipment, testing out new technology. Um, so it's definitely a regiment I highly recommend going to. But you need to be physically fit and mentally robust. But going through phase one and phase two, the instructors are going to get you there. So you don't have to worry. If you're at a really low physical fitness, it doesn't matter. As long as you're always meeting the basic fitness requirements, getting through training when you get there, they'll get you to where you need to be. So I hope the video was useful. Please let us know what your thoughts are. Send us a message on Combat Ready HQ Instagram or an email, combatreadyhq at outlook.com. Don't be afraid to mess with me and I'll help you get through it. And we're, you know, we'll win together. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon.